Okay, so here's a sex length problem really quickly. Let's write some stuff in some side facts. XX equals female. Of course, XY equals male. And just keep in mind, remember there are no matching chromosomes that are similar on uh, both sets of X and Y for the male. There's no matching, just usually no matching Y gene for its X. But females have pairs, so they're all good, okay? So it says... Colorblind hemophilia are both located in the X chromosome with no corresponding gene on the Y. These are both recessive alleles. So here we go. So let's just name our key here, which we should matter do is N, little n, is going to equal <coughs> colorblindness, okay? Okay? And obviously, big N equals regular. Okay. All right. So, uh, if a man and woman both with normal vision, so to have normal vision, the man has got to have. Well, the man has got to have X, big N. Does that make sense? Let's erase it and make that red, so that makes more sense to you guys. Big N, yeah. And remember. On the, on the Y for the man, there's nothing going to go there. There's no chromosome that corresponds, or no corresponding X chromosome, okay? So this is male. I'll just make this easy for you guys. And the female, obviously, is going to have a double X. And it says, <clears throat> um, it also says that uh, the woman... Both with normal vision, marry and have a colorblind son, which means that she, this is the key here, that if they have a colorblind son, I'm going to underline it right here, that must mean she must be heterozygous for colorblindness on her X chromosome. So just keep this in mind. If here's the cross that illustrates that. Um, so, yep, these two are getting crossed here, and here's the, the cross. Okay, this is like a big X. Okay, this is the cross X. So I go ahead and cross those in my Punnett square. I'll go ahead and do that in red. Just show that's my cross. I have X, N, yeah, and Y. That's the male. And the female, which is X, big N, and X, little n. Okay? So I go ahead and I cross these guys, and I got an X, X. I'm just going to go ahead and make these different for you here so you can see the difference. And I go ahead and use blue this time. Yeah, come on. Okay, so look, this is going to be N. N, good. If I go here, this is just N. Okay, and here I have a N and a little n. And here I just have a little n. So, we look at, so this is how they could have had a colorblind sun. Which one of these in this square is the colorblind sun? If you think about it, it's going to be this one is the colorblind female. And this one would be the colorblind sun. And in case you're confused, remember, there is no corresponding allele, is the word, on the Y chromosome. Okay? So that's the result of the first cross. Okay? So draw the Punnett square that illustrates this. This is the answer. So this is the first. This is answered way down here. This is answered right here. Okay? Does that make sense? And the colorblind sun is right there. Here he is, okay? And the next question says, if the man dies and the woman remarries to a colorblind man, show a uh, punnett square showing the type children that could be expected, okay? So I'm actually going to pause this and I'm going to move the screen down. So. Okay, so, well, actually, I'm going to erase everything here, so I just want to give you guys one good look at this. So here's, we answered the first question. <clears throat> and in case you were lost, the first question is right here, okay? So now I'm going to pause this and erase everything. Okay, so if we remember the previous cross, um, we discovered that her genotype, the female's genotype, since she had a colorblind son, was that she was going to have to be heterozygous, okay? You remember that? Um, you should. If not, go back. She must be heterozygous. And in case the key is forgotten, little n equals colorblindness. And big N is regular vision. Okay? 
full of color. All right. So, you know, her husband died, and, you know, she found another guy. And uh, with this other guy, he happened to be colorblind, which is not very unlikely, because my father, this is a cross here to separate out the X's for you, so you know that it's actually the cross. And we go ahead and do the cross, and, well, I'm sorry, we don't do the cross. Um, we know that he's colorblind. Since he's colorblind, what must his genotype be? Well, he can't have anything on the Y, so if he's colorblind, he's got to have a what on the X. That's right, a little n. Okay. So given that situation there, we uh, go ahead and set up our cross. All right. And we put an x up here with an the, the x over there, an x there, and a y there. I'm just going to be all color coordinated. She's a heterozygote. Good. And he is obviously colorblind, hence his genotype. Put them together, and we get, we only get one carrier. We get a colorblind female, we get another regular guy, and finally we get a colorblind guy. Okay, so it asks, how many or what percentage of each could be expected? Well, we obviously know, how, what is the, the chance uh, that we're going to have a colorblind child? Of all child, including boys and girls, so obviously A, if you look at it a little closely here, you can see that which ones are colorblind? These guys are colorblind, right? So, and these other two on the other side are not colorblind. So it's a 50% chance of colorblindness. Okay, and that's if you're a boy or a girl, right? If you're a boy, you have 50% chance of being colorblind. If you have a, if you're a girl, you're also 50% of being colorblind. But altogether, every child has a 50% chance of being colorblind, which is actually interesting because my dad's colorblind. But, um, okay, does that make sense, everybody? Uh, that was a problem to kind of a while, but I hope that you guys can kind of understand that. So, um, sorry I made a couple mistakes in this, but I'm a little tired now. But, um, okay, good.